So for the character rigs today, uh, the project that is due is the concepts for the character rig. We've been talking about it in terms of uh, character rig ideation. Um, can you all hear me OK? Yep. Good, OK. Uh, so with the ideation, we're looking for three poses with three actions. This can be done in Photoshop. Uh, and then you're going to create your rig in Animate. And that's what I'm going to work with uh, in terms of introducing that to you today. Um, your ideation was to include ideas uh, for different types of attacks for a 2D game, uh, something like what a headbutt attack would be, uh, starting with your normal your ideation for a resting pose, then a head whip back, head down, bent at a waist smack. So kind of thinking um, of the, uh, the, the three poses that would generate that look. Um, and these were completely up to you. So on the character rig ideation slideshow, which y'all can get from uh, the website process slideshow, please make sure that you have in the slideshow your ideation page, like we see for Nick here. Pretty cool, Nick. Um, we're going to review these today in breakout rooms. Um, the breakout rooms are going to, I'm going to have a breakout room that meets with me individually um, in, in groups, probably in pairs or three, and uh, we'll review how these are going. Uh, but before I get to that, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to do the introduction to uh, what the rigging process is going to be like. Um, we'll start to analyze files. Uh, let's see if these, these images come up. Um, for the, the animation rig uh, and how to set those files up. These are the files that I'm going to show you all to animate um, and for file setup and uh, there's visuals as to how the slides should be or the files should be set up. Uh, so two breakout rooms are gonna happen after, the, uh, after I introduce this. Uh, we're going to look at how the files of your ideation are going. And then uh, the other group of people will start to do the animation uh, drawing, taking your sketches in and doing uh, first the, uh, the still pose, the idle pose. So for Nick, it would be this pose uh, would be what you would start to develop out. So uh, before we get to that, though, I'd like to take a quick walk around just to see how everybody's pieces are going. We're not going to review them too much, just kind of do some wows and awesome job, and then we'll, we'll review it more in detail. So Nick, this turned out great. Thank you. Your sloth guardian. What is this thing right here? What's your idea with this? That's going to be like the magical earth energy shield. It's going to be kind of like glowing vines that come up. Fantastic vines, huh? That's, that's creative. I like that. Thank you. Cool. OK, and we have Sarah's next. It's looking good, Sarah. You're here too, right? Yeah. Sarah Ray, there you are. What is this? Uh, this is the, he looks exhausted here, huh? He's this it's is at the end of the semester. <laughs> More like mid-semester. <laughs> mid <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, OK, and then Michaela, it looks like you have a couple pages for yours, right? Yeah. So have, uh, dancing lights. Here's your character so far. Dancing lights. So he's got the, the flute and assets are coming off of it. A slash and the backflip. That's, that's great. And then he'll just jump right back into that. You can probably mm -hmm. twirl him a couple times almost in the same pose that yeah, that's cool. We've got a couple backflips uh, in previous work that we can show you Jerboa Jones by uh, uh, I'm forgetting 
the artist name. We had looked at it uh, in the animation test and it's on the bottom here. Oh, I'll have to find it for you. I'm sorry, and I apologize to, uh, to the student that I'm forgetting their name. Um, but we'll we'll take a look at some examples for you with that flip because it can get a little bit complicated. Really nice okay. work there. Um, and this is Kaylee's work, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I quickly put what I have on there. I didn't do the layout yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad you went with the design of the the angled character. I think that that's cool because I think you were thinking about going with this. this the, the yeah, one. I was originally going to go with him, but I changed my mind. Yeah, I like it. Good work. Okay, and then we have Susie. Susie's uh, not going to join us today, but uh, I can see that Susie has worked uh, real hard on getting the cloth swipe and the damage images. Nice work, Susie, on that. And we have Kelly. Kelly, uh, got some really cool special effects going with your energy whip. Nice work there. And uh, whose work is this? This is Amber's. Amber's with us today. Boy, you, Amber, you really uh, kind of fleshed out what your character design is also. That's awesome. This yeah. is the first time we're seeing that. So um, let's see really, really good shape design for it. So there's all kinds of stuff that happens on the inside of the fishbowl, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. There was one more. It was under the first one. Oh, yeah, this one. one. Yeah, nice. Nice work. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad everybody's using different special effects parts. I think that that's going to be important to what we're doing today. And um, uh, into the future as we're working through this. Elliot with the Tiki character pose stuff. Nice work, Elliot. Elliot had changed the, uh, the shield shape and uh, it's fun to see his, his face change on the, on the mask. Nice work, Elliot. Then we have Maggie's work here. The downpour and rejuvenate. That's beautiful. Really nice. Maggie's here, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And Cherith uh, has uh, made some more decisions on the way the, the robot a cyborg character is going to look. So that that's cool to see Cherith. And what is in the this? can or jar chair what's your idea with that um you mentioned a container for severed heads oh <laughs> so um, oh it was my idea for a container of severed heads yeah yeah it's Halloween um, week everyone <laughs> i thought that was a good idea so i figured he carries it around with a sticky hand because he's got like little frog oh fingers. yeah yeah interesting okay cool i like that and kaylin uh has continued kind of working on this design. The Perry and the Death. The Moon Piercer, wow, that's, that's nice. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and this piece is by Drew. Is Drew with us today? Drew's kind of figuring out what his uh, monkey is gonna look like a little bit further and Green and Matthew could join us later. They're, they're probably gonna add theirs um, before their 12.30 slot. Looking forward to seeing those. Uh, so nice work today. If you all do not have your resting pose, please make sure that you do your resting pose design first before you get into Animate because it really is more of like a technical process that we're gonna do in Animate. So um, good, good work on that today. Uh, I am going to put us into different breakout groups. So if you are uh, not ready with your resting pose, please work on that. Then 
come and visit me. So you should be in the in the work session breakout group if you're not ready for um, the review with me. A couple other uh, announcements to make before we get into the details of the, the project in Animate. Um, so in October, midterm grades were due uh, for the teachers to hand in to my FSU. So you can look to, um, to have that. Uh, you actually don't get access to those grades from teachers just generally on my FSU unless they've released them to you. I release your grades. So if you go into uh, the, the uh, course here on Canvas and you look at what I wrote down is uh, midter midterm grade recorded on Canvas, that's going to be your grade. Um, I graded the, uh, the project uh, motion design, character designs. And I'd like for you to go into uh, where you had submitted the motion design finals for your work for character design um, uh, in Canvas. And I've made some comments there. Some of you may find that it may be worth making revisions to your uh, characters for the motion designs. Uh, in a lot of cases, it came down to the clarity of your, your designs uh, in terms of the consistency of your work from, the, uh, from when they're in context and the environment. Those tended to be really strong and really designed well. But sometimes in the, in the character lineup with the three characters, uh, there wasn't as consistent of work. So it's just sort of like these little things, like getting the feet to, to look like they're the same kind of um, style. Um, it may be that they got too simplified. Uh, maybe just going back like that into, into what I'm making suggestions for, I think will help you in your portfolio. If you would like to resubmit that into Canvas, then I'll relook at it for another grade also, even though midterms are up. Um, I really think it's important for your portfolio to have um, work that feels consistent and really professional. So that is an opportunity for you to make revisions to, to that, okay? Any questions about the uh, motion design characters? You'll probably have an opportunity to look at my comments and, and ask me questions about that if you if you want to throughout today. Um, all right, so I'm going to introduce the character rigging project in a little bit more depth. Uh, where we have worked through these concepts for the character rigging, it looks like to me some of you have to still um, create the anticipation and action poses. Uh, so please make sure you do that. Um, and it's very helpful to have the written information on the, on the page in addition to the action, and, the action and anticipation poses. So if you don't have that written on the page or typed on the page, um, please add that to uh, is my recommendation uh, so that we can see uh, your character um, idea. Please also have your name on the slide. That's, um, that's helpful to, to look at. So that was due today. Uh, we're gonna jump into this analyzing files for character rigging today. And we're gonna take a look at uh, my character for wheels, uh, Dizzy Lizzie. Uh, this is the, the full character. This is a grayscale right here, but, um, and then her, uh, her mouth set. So you can see that there's a lot of mouths designed for one character. And one of the things that y'all should know about in terms of uh, character design is that this is a this is the the bread and butter of what character design is, is um, kind of fleshing out all of the assets that would be needed for a character. Uh, in the animation industry, um, like for example, we went and visited Becky Bench, uh, who works in Toronto uh, at uh, an animation uh, studio. 
And this is the type of work she does. She does it for 3D animation, uh, but uh, this is what people will be doing for, uh, for 2D animation as well. So we're gonna look at the file for Dizzy Lizzie and uh, take a look at, at how the assembly is all placed together and the file set up. This, this page here, so isn't she cute guys? What do you think of my Lizzie? She's really cute. I like she's that so she's cute. very pink. She's, uh, she, was she used to be orange, orange and then we made her pink and I'm kind of fluctuating between whether we should have her be that, that girly girl or, or what. Um, she's supposed to be um, a symbol of femininity in, in, in the child's world. Uh, and she's actually, uh, her main element is that she is, um, her main concept anyways, is that she's, uh, she's very strong. She's the leader of the crew of the, uh, and the rest of them are all boy trucks. So uh, actually in this, in this piece, you can see that the freckles are a part of the mouth because that moves with the mouth. So cheeks will move with mouths. And that's something that you can recognize here. Um, if she had a nose, the nose is often connected in with the mouth with the, um, the assets. Uh, but she doesn't have a nose. Uh, she's got headlights that became eyes and her eyebrows um, are uh, her windshield wipers. And that's one of the acting elements. So I want you to think about what is the acting elements for your character as you kind of work from uh, this kind of thing. Um, you know, for example, Nick's got really the, the action of the arms are probably going to be the most action oriented. So um, there may be different poses for the hands and things like that, um, similar to what I've got in my, my rig for the, the eyebrows. The eyebrows have all these different poses for it um, so that you can have angry eyebrows, happy eyebrows, um, surprised eyebrows when they go up higher. Those are things that you all think through. Today, when you start to um, lay out your characters, um, these are the two other characters, Max and Biff. Um, start to lay them out in this kind of method. Um, if everything is on its own layer, then you can animate right in the timeline. You can also use folders, but keep the symbols stacked up, including alternate views. So alternate views and so, for example, um, all of these uh, mouths are all stacked up inside of this mouth symbol. So the symbol, if I were to double click in it, it becomes uh, this. So they're all stacked up on top of each other instead of down the timeline. So I want you to um, work in that way. And we'll analyze this um, a little bit further too. Um, Here's another example uh, of Tyler, and you can see all of the, the hand designs uh, that are placed here. So you're really thinking about, like you can see uh, there's not a line connecting and you have to be able to make that in such a way that it doesn't break the rig when you work on the piece. So this is a demo file. Um, I'm gonna show you this later. This is actually, uh, uh, for the eyeball assembly and how that functions. I'll show you all that later. This, this piece by um, uh, an animation studio, this is, this is actually um, a way that we don't want you to animate uh, and set up a rig. We wanna show you this for some of the 3D turns. We're really keeping ours in a 2D um, moving sideways image set. Um, and this is symbols inside of symbols inside of symbols. We'd rather not have you have things, symbols inside of symbols inside of symbols inside of symbols. It gets really, really complicated. So if you use this method where everything is stacked up on top of each other in one timeline, it's gonna be a stronger way to work. Um, so we want you to use the, the Lizzie um, setup, which is like this. Um, and so this is what you're going to start to create today, but we want you to have this kind of file set up. So, Rupert, that was another name for Max. Um, 
This is his uh, assets. So the cab assembly. Um, there are symbols inside of this, but uh, all of those assets, they're stacked on top of each other instead of only having Rupert as, as one. We want to be able to animate it down the same timeline. Biff, and then the background stuff. So uh, this is a file uh, that you can analyze for the folder setup method. And there are three files here that we're going to analyze uh, for Lizzie uh, so you can check out how she's done. So I would encourage you to download these three files. Um, starting today, we're going to actually um, truly look at them a little bit more in depth um, on, let's see. Um, next week, Monday. But today, what I want to show you is the uh, drawing demo. Now, you have been drawing in Animate, but I think it's important to recognize that uh, we need to really work on simplifying the, the image. So let me share Animate with you. So this is Lizzie in, um, in Animate. Excuse me here. So my microphone is just going down. Let me see if I can get this to function. OK, can you all hear me OK still? Yep. OK. Um, so this is the Lizzie demo. And are you all seeing the, the Animate file? Great. OK. okay. So you'll be bringing a sketch in. Um, and uh, let me turn these layers off. So this is a sketch that we have for Lil Lizzie. And uh, she's actually been altered um, in her imaging since the sketch. So you can see like this is actually what she looks like now. Um, her mouth has changed a little bit and she's, she's not so rigid in, in her form. That happened as I worked on um, taking her from sort of this 3D sketch um, where we had a, a, a grid that I was working against and kind of humanized her a little bit more by making her be a little bit more fluid. Um, when I look at some of your character designs right now, they, they are a little bit stiff. So I want you to think about how can you make your characters more fluid in their design. And that will happen most likely as you move through uh, the drawing phase. So what I did is I brought my sketch in. And um, this was before we had access to um, changing uh, the layers with advanced layer styles. So I added a lightener. Um, but I think that everyone already knows how to uh, use advanced layer styles. Is that correct to lighten your, your sketch? Or I you can demo that right now. That. What was that? Um, like going into the properties of the layer, you mean? Yeah. So okay. like if I unlock this and I click on this keyframe, which I would have already brought into, um, let me put on the black selection tool, uh, object. Uh, this file looks like it might not have, um, advanced layer styles. So color and style. Yeah, you can also like click on the layer itself and go to you click you click right here, isn't it? You have yeah. to click on the word sketch, don't you? Is that Sarah saying that? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then into object. Oh yeah, I I would just click on um just to change the opacity. I don't think you get any of the other options, but if you right click on it. On the, that word sketch? Yeah, and then go uh -huh. down to properties. There we go. 
There we go. Yeah, you can that's change different the than changing it over in this this properties panel, isn't it? Yeah, so, I have a lot of assets from the um, Garrett Morgan file that mm -hmm. like some of them need to be changed over on like the layers and then some of them have the color and style on the other side. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So um, that that's helpful. So that's the way to adjust the um, the drawing as you bring it in. Um, everybody, though, should also have. Uh, if you go to this, let's see. Um, let me click off uh, and then into Edit Preferences. Um, go to Edit Preferences couple of things that I want to make sure that you have open. And I only do this every once in a while. So let's see, drawing. Yeah, it's actually not in there. It's modify document. OK, so this actually doesn't have it. That's why I wasn't able to click on it. So modify document, use advanced layers. I want you to all have use advanced layers on and then we'll be able to alter your color as we're working on it. So turn on advanced layers. Uh, if we make this the default, um, that, that will help you uh, to always have that in the future. It kind of helps us to have uh, the ability to change color like we do in Photoshop to individual layers. Um, so I'm just gonna say, okay, there. Um, so just setting up your file in this way is helpful. Um, of course, I imported this file of the sketch into, into the piece. Um, this this uh, document is not set up for 1920 by 1080. It's just kind of a squarish file. Um, eventually, it would have to be 1920 by 1080. Not a big deal right now, though. Um, so we wouldn't need this lightener thing. But the idea is that you're going to draw each of these assets uh, on different layers. I've got the cab. Anything that's going to be animated should be set up in different, um, in different layers. So the cab is like the truck part. It's not going to move separate from itself um, like the, uh, the windshield wipers, which are her eyebrows, like I talked about, the wheels would all be separate. So you have to make sort of a plan for yourself. What are you going to make separate in order to animate? Um, and then the, the pipe is a separate thing. Um, one of the things that uh, we worked on when we worked on the motion design piece was uh, getting a sense of simplified forms. So I'm just going to do a, a quick drawing here. I'm going to do it for one of her windshield wipers. So we do call those eyebrows. I'm going to make a new layer, call it eyebrow, and I'll draw this. Um, I want you to use your pencil tool in the beginning of making a shape. I'm going to zoom in. Um, so pencil tool in the beginning. And uh, I'm going to also turn the cab off right now. Um, and I want it to go underneath because it's going to, to move. So um, when I do this drawing, I want um, the drawing to be set to smooth as I go. So I'm just going to do a little test here. Um, there we go. As I drew, the smoothing right now is set to zero. And this is where a lot of you may come into some problems where things are really kind of bumpy and, and kind of jumpy. Um, so I want to command Z both of those. I want to just take a look at that. Um, you see how many points this is? This really should have just been two points, ideally, because it's just pretty much a straight line. So I'm going to um, undo that. Then I'm going to get my pencil tool one more time, set this smoothing to 100. Uh, for something like this, we want that style to be set to consistent um, width, um, this width, and you can play with your stroke size. Eventually, I get rid of all of my line on this character uh, because this is ultimately what she looks like. There is no line at the end. 
Uh, so that's kind of the, the baked of what we're going to do. So now let's see how this um, line looks after having that 100 on there. I'm going to click A. Um, and you can see now it's about two points, which means that then I can hit V and kind of make it a little bit more dynamic in its, in its pose. That's the, that extra point I'm going to get rid of that by boxing over it. It doesn't want to. There we go. And putting this right in its place. All right. So then I would just kind of keep drawing, um, kind of getting into the, into the mode of getting these assets where they need to go. Oops, I'm drawing on the sketch. Control Z. I have stuff coming up on here. This action cannot be completed because the file is open. I don't even know what that is. Control Z, there we go. And Control Z again. I need to lock everything and only have uh, things on the, the eyebrow. So I'm gonna unlock the eyebrow, turn this on and off. I think my first eyebrow was on the wrong layer also. Find it. Control X or Command X to cut it, go and paste it onto this keyframe, Control Shift V or Command Shift V, that's pasted in place, and I'm gonna draw it again. I know that this might feel kind of repetitive to what you have done in motion design, but I wanna really clarify that we need to simplify our forms and there are a couple of ways that we can do that. So before I continue, let me just grab the V, the, the A tool, little function. There's a whole bunch of points here that I don't wanna have. I'm gonna hit backspace or delete um, on those. Just gonna kind of simplify that and pencil again. This is the sharp part. Okay, um, so now that I have this, I'm gonna click on the keyframe and I'm gonna go to modify um, and I think it's shape and optimize. And I'm gonna go up to optimize as, like you can see it in context by hitting the preview. This is helpful. I think that a lot of you were um, keeping things with a lot of points. Even when I saw your point um, uh, imaging, you can see that these points, there's one at the end of each one of those. That's a really good simplified form. And then it's just about hitting K to find the, the color that we need for the, the pink of that with a gradient. And these each have a gradient running and then I would get rid of the form. So finding this and I would absolutely also recommend that you um, replace colors with the universal color swatches, which is here. And um, so I'm gonna make this kind of a grayish form here. And when you're dumping, make sure that you have your close large gaps selected. And then my next color is going to be a little bit more pinkish. And then I'm gonna get rid of all of my lines by double clicking. And now I got rid of my lines. For the gradient fills, um, just to kind of quickly demo that, I'm gonna take this and go to my color in the palette and change that from solid color to a linear gradient. And I'm going to hit uh, F for the gradient control and then push it this way and this way. And then I'm going to then change this color um, back in the color set, double click, get the color at the end. This is actually my darkest color, so I want that to go dark. Double click, make this uh, cutie pink. 
Okay, and then push this closer. So it's got that kind of lighting on it. And then on something like this, I would also do that, but make it really, really tight um, in, its, in its fill. So I could hit, I could hit I, pick that, and then pick from, from here. But that's not exactly the right color. So then I would hit F, grab that gradient fill, and grab it from here, move it around, take this color and make this more the purple color. Take this color and make it more the light purple. Oops. That should be a separate tone still. It should be a separate shape. Anyways, it takes, it takes a while to get these things going. Eventually you get it to be um, where you want it to go. The first pose that you're gonna make is what's gonna take the longest time to create because you'll be able to duplicate these forms and shape them and turn them um, as you start to make your, your animation sequence. So when you work today, I want you to just kind of really work on creating your, your very first pose, which is your idle pose, your resting pose. So hopefully showing you some of what I was doing by creating the, the assets is helpful to you. Okay. Um, here she goes. Let me zoom out on Lizzie here. Zoom back in on the piece and the little player. She's got a spinning top. Oh, well, she gets so sad, surprised, disgusted. It's a jump pose. Everything is stretching and pulling. Here's your breathing, resting set. So that's similar to, to a three pose set that, that you would make. Um, and But before you get to any of that animation, you have to uh, design each of the assets that are needed. If I go into uh, the library, we can look at all of the assets that are in here. So uh, this is the bed. Uh, the, these are like these rasters that um, kind of they hook on that uh, little piece that is her pipe. This is the cab assembly with the eyes underneath. Make sure that everything is underneath uh, fully rendered if needed. There's the eyes, um, the freckles, and each of uh, the mouths are on separate layers. More eyes, wheels. You can see how the wheels became more uh, simplified than they were in the initial drawing. And that's because uh, we figured in order to animate it, we wanted it to be round. So you might have to kind of troubleshoot your pieces as you go through to find out how um, things will be um, needed in terms of animation. So here's the eyebrows that uh, I had just um, shown you. So if I double click into those wipers, when you actually do have the assets made, um, this is kind of a raised eyebrow. These are the angry eyebrow and stretched out. So there's a, a lot of different ways to get them. So the idea is you're going to make one first, and then you can just kind of move and alter the asset. Um, these also have shadows because ultimately uh, it goes onto the character with uh, shadows onto it. So it gets a little bit more complicated too. This is a pretty high level rig where there's, there's a lot of gradients. I'm not expecting everybody to get to this level of rendering, uh, but you certainly have to have yours colored, right? So, okay. That's a little uh, intro to Lizzie and how she's been rigged. And mostly we want you to work in the, um, the process of having, having the right kind of layer method that I was showing you in, uh, 
uh, the file. Let me just show that one more time. Um, so we want you to set up the, the file and this, this kind of a setup. So any questions before you all begin your, um, your work in Animate today? Awesome. All right, I'm going to set you up into uh, two different breakout rooms. Um, looking at that calendar. Uh, this, this project is for the rest of the semester. So there's a lot to do in terms of setting up the look of your file. You're gonna want it to look completely awesome. And uh, I'm gonna help you to, to get there. Uh, we're, we're really working on animating the resting pose. And the goal is to kind of get that done within one week um, by November 2, at the end of that day is my goal for you to have um, uh, that, that done. Um, next class, we're gonna do the Halloween virtual profile pictures. So that will be fun. Uh, we'll continue to work on your animation, uh, your, not the animation, but the resting pose in Animate. And then in November, November 2, uh, we'll continue to analyze the, the rig files. And on Wednesday, we'll, we'll start to work on more intense assets for your rig. So you would like kind of start to work out if you were doing the eyebrows, um, more sets of eyebrows. Uh, and I'll start to introduce the animation test here. So um, but we will keep working on this until December 11th is our last day of the studio class. Um, your animation test, which is your full animation of the three sequences running will be due on the 7th and your page layout, which is kind of breaking it down in terms of what it looks like just two dimensionally without, uh, without the movement which looks like this, uh, that is due the day before the, well, that's actually, yeah, that's due the last day of our class. Our last day is the, the night. So does anybody have questions about the process of what we're doing towards the final? There is a, a troubleshooting thing that I'll, I'll work through and I'm gonna help you with any sort of technical questions that you have along the way. So make sure you reach out if you've got questions about that. All right, I'm gonna open up the rooms. Uh, there's a work room and a review room. Um, I'm looking for just uh, two people to join me in a review room who would like to do that first. I will. Okay. Is that just reviewing the uh... The it's action gonna, poses. It's going to review, yeah, the ideation page. Okay. I can do that as well. Okay, I'll have Amber and Nick. I'll put you in the review room. Um, and the rest of you, I'd like for you to go into the work room. Uh, I've set it up to have you be able to join on your own, but um, I will put in there. Hey, Susan, Maggie and I can go after um, you're done with the first group. Okay, I'll come and get get you next. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, good luck with your work today. And I'll see you real shortly. Okay. Hey, Kelly, are you here? Yep, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Uh, go on into the workroom, okay? Do you Got have it. any questions or concerns right now?
Hi, Amber and Nick. Hello. Hi. Hello. Let me, when I do cell shading, let me go back to animate um, and into this drawing demo piece. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't make any of the symbols yet. I just, I'm working just making layers. So I won't okay. worry about symbols at that point. Okay. Um, so let's, let's just kind of give the pipe a, a tone. So knowing that we're ending up being right here, right? So there's mm -hmm. three elements. And so I do the cell shading first, um, where I get like this dark shape and then another shape and then that highlight. And I do that as cell shading first. So let me kind of help plan what that is going to be. So I'm going to lock everything. And um, then I use the, the pencil tool to, and as I'm using the pencil, I'm going to go to properties, making sure it's um, smooth is on and up to 100. There we go. OK. I had to actually draw it to be able to see it. Um, so draw, draw, and I'm on the pipe, just checking to see if I'm on it, and then um, do some dumps on it. So hit K, find, uh, you know, as I get going, if I am going to use gradients and I know that I'm going to, I will often kind of like, OK, I'm just going to dump that gradient, which is what this is, but it doesn't have it on it. So I'm going to hit F and find that. You can see that this is way over here for some reason, actually. That gradient, I'm going to zoom way out. It's because the gradient fill was not locked. Now I'm going to hit F. Whoa, it's way over here. OK, so this is how you add a gradient? Yeah, this was me. I'm changing a gradient right now. So this has a just a slight gradient mm -hmm. right now. So, okay. so now I'm going to hit. Do, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> in order to do a gradient, you fill first, and then what's the shortcut for the gradient tool? So F? I'm doing a, F is gradient transform tool. So I'm, I'm okay. going to hit K to dump, and I've got this in it. Now the the reason why it did that huge gradient fill that filled the whole screen was I didn't have gradient lock on. So I'm going to click this gradient lock. Okay, and mm. that should see how it gave it right within this. So yeah. that's what I that's what I really want. So I'm oh, you already had a gradient on your bucket tool, I see. I did, yeah. So I'm grabbing both of them and now I'm gonna hit K and it should fill that. Now I'm gonna hit F for the gradient transform tool and make it kind of fit opposite so it can kind of I see. feel dark and light. But now I'm gonna change it by double clicking. Well, double clicking doesn't work, you have to click here make this mm. more dark and more gray and this one more light. I'm going to shift it and try it opposite. There we go. So now I can get rid of my lines after I've um, put the gradients on there. Sometimes okay, you so you don't, you don't have to separate the shading onto different layers? The shading? Absolutely not. No, okay. shading. Um, I can actually double click to try to get all these lines off, but sometimes it's being kind of nasty to me. <laughs> so really, if I'm going to get rid of lines, I need to go to E, which is eraser, and turn on um, erase mode, erase lines. Oh, that's and cool. I can, that's um, good to know. <laughs> I can get rid of all the lines right here. And all the lines are now gone. Okay. So, yeah. And then I just kind of keep going. I'm going to fill this with a gradient. K, dump. F to change it so that the dark is down below and it really is too saturated in its set. So if I want it, like, if it's solid, like, like you were wondering, how do you make it from a solid to a gradient? Like this one yeah. right now is solid, right? I would go to the... Um, to the palette and change solid color to linear gradient. Okay. And then that's the gradient that I've got. I could add this to my swatches if I want. Yeah. And then F to transform it because I want the dark on the bottom bigger. So I'm getting 
getting there. It takes okay. a while before yeah. I get to that prettiness, but actually the dark is supposed to be on the top is what I ended up figuring out. So, yep. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So in this, you can see like I went dark to light and then dark to light this direction. Mm -hmm. So kind of like playing with where the the lights and the darks are shifting up against each other makes something feel shiny. Because I think that you've got kind of a metal uh, helmet that you're going to have on your piece. I don't or think he doesn't have a helmet. Mm -mm. Your your benchmark did. No, he um. No metal on yours. Uh, well, the axe is going to be. Oh right, right. Or wait, is it going to be stone? Nah, it'll be metal. Okay. <laughs> All right, good stuff. All right, Elliot, let's take a look at what your piece looks like. What is, where is your um, okay. slide? It's going to be down 45, right. oh, slide okay. 45. And you've got the Tiki Mask Warrior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, so this is kind of what I came up with. Yeah, you've got your ideation is is really strong. Um, I would just recommend putting the titles of them okay, yeah. on the on the piece, like our examples have, which is um, here. The the first one at least has them written there. It's just helpful to be able to have that in there. Yeah. Okay. And so I would just write it like right here and put your little Elliot Taylor um, icon that you have in there. Um, fantastic. So you're just going to start with this this resting pose here. Yeah, first. Yep, the standing one. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like flipped it when he gets hit. Does that make sense? So uh, he figure. would be. Susan, you're not sharing <laughs> your screen. I'm not sharing my screen. Mm -mm. OK, well, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, Elliot, so yeah. Um, yeah, you're gonna work on this resting pose and you were talking about mm -hmm. that you flipped it. What, what are you talking oh, about? Oh, I just meant like the bottom one, how, actually it doesn't really matter, Never mind. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, like he doesn't start out in the resting pose is what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, he's... that's fine, yeah. So yeah, when you start doing your drawings today, work on that. In terms of rigging this, um, this, this hand will all be one thing because this will envelope warp in its pose. Like there's not, um, on this on this arm, it never gets a bend like this. So um, you really don't see the need for it to have a double rig. Okay. Um, but at any rate, everybody's just gonna work in, in layers right now anyways. Um, okay. Yeah. How are you going to get this texture? What are you thinking of for this? Oh, um, I don't know. I feel like there's like a bunch of ways I could go about it. Mm -hmm. um, I like to bash like textures together. Otherwise, I can put some cool could do, brush on um, it. Bitmap fill textures. Um, have you seen? Yeah. Do you know how to do that? I don't think so. I've heard about okay. that, though. All right. So um, on the. Uh, let me just go to my YouTube channel. I've got two different ways um, to do that, which is the bitmap fill and uh, so there's this one, textures in a mask, which is an alternate to a bitmap fill, and then there's the bitmap fill. Okay. So um, I'm going to put these two um, pieces into the chat for you. All right, thanks. Okay, so. Michaela's wondering how to maybe do a, a little bit of a glow function. So I'm going to take us back to this Lizzie drawing demo um, where I'd kind of started rendering this pipe. So if we had, um, if we wanted to glow this pipe, for example, this asset, I can go to object. Let's see. I'm going to select it all and there's a color effects which that that helps us to get a color shift but we want a glow which is in filters if you hit plus on filters do you see my animate Michaela yes okay 
Um, then there is a glow tool. Okay, so you can see I just got red because that's the standard. Um, so let's uh, let's make this glow. It's without having a dark colored background, it's a little bit hard to see. So what I'm going to do is make a new layer and um, hit K and have that be uh, dark. Zoom out, out. I might need to actually make a shape. Um, there we go. So now when I turn off the sketch and go back to my pipe and hit V and uh, lock this, go to here, click on it. It's like a way, the way that you click it is the trick to it. There's the filter and there's um, the glow Let's give it like a pinkish glow and make the blur of it bigger. Do you see how it's kind of getting that glow going right now? Mm -hmm. And there's inner glow, outer glow, knockout is opposite. So you could kind of have a shape and then have an outside thing. So, and there's also um, this kind of medium and high will help you to do that. The, the other way to do it, if you don't want to, um, like this is kind of, it, it might not be as fancy as you need. You might need to work with gradients that go to 0% opacity or alpha on the outside might be okay. the way that you're going to make a function, but you can actually have objects glow like I'm doing here. Okay. All right. So hopefully that helps you think about that. Yeah. Um, so now let's go back to your screen um because you're gonna have like these orbs that can glow as they're moving around that will be quite beautiful i hope so yeah and then next you've got this really cool uh sword with a really cool hilt running that's that's a really nice design uh yeah i'm gonna do that separately and animate and then kind of like put it in because i want the design to be a little fancier but we'll mm -hmm. see like just time constraints, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, as you design these right now, just think about um, just design it in many layers, and then we'll and you're gonna do your idle pose. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I would I would have the leg be one asset, and then the shoe on top as another asset right now, and eventually we'll we'll end up combining what we need. Um, okay. into symbols, but don't worry about the symbols yet. Okay. Um, make sure that that tail is designed all the way behind it because we can turn it and whip yes. it. We'll use envelope warp to, um, to change it so you don't have to redraw it every time. I'm going to show you in the next class how to use envelope warp to make that work. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it looks great. Um, your rendering is going to be like what you're doing in Photoshop here, um, kind of flat. So you're going to use cell rendering. Um, yeah, I had considered gradients at first, but I don't think that's quite the look I want to go for. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably just end up doing cell. Maybe so, just subtle gradients and larger shapes, yeah, kind of like the like, first one there. Yeah, there's there are some gradients in this that help it to have some depth. Um, mm -hmm. But so what I would do is just start with all the solid colors, just kind of yeah. the, the local color of whatever the asset is, and then later come in with the, the gradients. Now we have until next week, Monday, to finish that out. So okay. um, right now, just do try to get the drawing and the fills correct, and then you'll, then you'll add the gradients, then you'll add like the mud stuff and everything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so now let's take a look at Cherith. Cherith, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. So we're looking at Michaela's file and animate. And so you had done your piece, your color rendering already in Photoshop. That wasn't necessary, mm -hmm. it was just a step you wanted to do, but you are rendering it in animate, right? Getting all these yeah. flats in there, it looks like. 
Great. And you've got this nice idle pose running. Let's see, um, what's your, can you make your, let me uh, make some annotations. Uh, can you make this longer so I can see what yes. you're... Good, okay, good. And uh, why don't you just kind of go through and turn these off so I can see how you're layering these things right now. Good. You've got your neck long enough that it goes underneath the head. Good. And then that's probably all just one perfect. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to, that torso, like turn, turn just the torso back on. Um, you could have different layers for the shirt and then the vest. Um, okay. if, it, if it helps you, because um, you might need to do like some rendering on it and that, mm -hmm. that can help if it's separated into layers. Um, so creating as many layers as you need right now to uh, make the, the piece and then later on we can com compile them down into, into one set. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So when you're doing this, are you doing it with line and then fill and then getting rid of the line with the eraser method? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an eraser mode. Go ahead and click on that. So because I'm recording this so other people can see it. Right here, you have your eraser mode. And if you click on that, you can erase it with line only. Mm -hmm. Can you click on that, Michaela? I, I did. The eraser mode up here. Um, Am I, oh, the yeah, zoom thing was right in front of it. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like trying to circle. So click on that and then uh, see if you have erase lines on. Uh, that's the way that you can erase any of the lines that you have and you don't have to like, try to click and click and delete, click and delete. Yeah. And that's why it's important for us to use line and then fills. So it looks like you're doing great with that. Um, it looks beautiful. Uh, I think you're completely setting it up in the right way. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Michaela. Do you have any questions that I can help you figure out at all? Um, I do have one quick one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have a little predicament with the neck right now mm -hmm. in which it's in front of most of the torso, but then it's like behind that gold part. Cause like you see how it looks kind of weird right here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I know what you have to do here. Let me get my drawing tool back out. You need this. Um, you need a front collar. So you need a collar that's in front of the neck. You need a okay. layer that's called that, and that will help you to to have it look the way you need. Okay. So you can actually just cut that. So um, select the. It's probably, is it on torso? Is that what you have? So yes. unlock torso. And then get your V tool. So, yep. And then click on the yellow part. Um, but you Yeah, because I have it all the same yep. right so now. Go, so I'll have to just. Well, just draw a line. Turn the neck off with the eyeball. And draw a line right through the middle of it. Okay, let me with a color that's weird. That's not um, one that you would normally use. If you don't want it to be yellow, for example. Right. All right. Where's my cursor? There it is. Would I just do that with the pencil yep, tool? Pencil then? tool. Mm -hmm. And then change your. You have nothing in the in the pencil tool right now. So make it a color. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And then just draw it right in the middle where the neck is right here. Good. Okay. And then I want you to get the V tool, the selection tool, and then select that. Good. Mm -hmm. Command or control X. Okay. Now, um, I don't think we made a new layer yet, but make a layer no. called um, uh, collar. and go to this keyframe. So click on the keyframe and command or control shift V to paste in place. Okay, 
So now it's in front. Now turn your neck layer back on with the eyeball. Okay. Um, and then you just need to find where you need to. Right. Meet. Okay. Okay. So yep. you would draw a line and, and you know, what might do is um, grab the neck, put it on the collar layer. So cut, uh, copy the neck layer. You need to unlock it. Copy the neck layer. Go <laughs> up to the collar layer. Unlock the collar layer. And um, click on the keyframe. And Command Shift V. Okay. Now delete the the neck. Not just the one that's newly drawn right here. I've got a lot of drawings, but yeah, just <laughs> click on that and delete it. I think you need to click off because you were you were still on it. So command Z, click off, click on to nothing. Yep. Now click on the cop on the neck and delete. Um, turn off some. Yeah. Do you see how we got rid of it? And you oh, get okay. Rid of the, get rid of this neck line because that's on your collar layer. Yep. Okay. Let me. And then also. Go and find that line and get rid of it by double clicking on it. Otherwise, it will be funny. I think that's on your torso. Yeah, double click it. Oh, Got to unlock it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then delete if you double click. There you go. It's important to double click. Otherwise, you yep. won't get all the parts of it. Yeah. And um, now you should be able to turn the neck on, turn all your eyeballs back on, and you should have all of the process should be there with the collar on top. Oh, I think I did it wrong. You need yeah. Call, you need this collar to be like to here, right? Like in a shape that makes sense. Like right. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Do you understand <laughs> okay. what to do to keep that? I, I deleted yes. it and we shouldn't. So you can go in history and change. And so you need to view, go to view. History is in a different place and animate. Um, that's actually window. Window and history. Turn that layer that mode on. Um, and then, yeah, make that bigger and just drag this over to this place over here. And um, what you have to do is you have to drag this up, but un until you actually click on that, it won't actually do that. So there's a little piece right here, like mm -hmm. a time timer, and you just yeah. can drag it up. So I don't know where it was that we did this delete. It looks like up here. So hold on a second, Michaela. Do you see this little thing that I'm clicking on right here? Oh, yeah. And drag it up. It acts a little bit different. Okay. There you go. Do you see, see how it goes back in time? OK. Uh, it doesn't want to let me drag it. Yeah, it, it's a little bit. It's kind of finicky. Mm -hmm. There we go. So go up before the delete. And keep okay. going up, because it's actually that delete. And go up to change selection. Good. Now it won't do the history until you actually click on that. So click there. Okay. Now it's got that ingrained in its memory that that's where you're going to stop. Okay. Okay. Let me clear my drawings. So now you just need to go in and find out like it's going to be something like that. Is that right? Where the collar is going to be? About, yeah. Yeah. So do you have an understanding of what we're going to do together? Yes. It? Okay. Sorry about the. We deleted too much. But... <laughs> That's OK. OK. All right. Good. Yeah, I'm glad we went over that, because that helps us to understand the um, how to use the history and how to make things go in front of other things. So yeah. that will help other students, too. The, the other thing I want to show you with that is um, like we, we ended up kind of deleting the, the collar from that other part, you should have purple go all the way to that so that the collar yeah. is underneath. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's where it's kind of a little bit like dress a doll where you have layers on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So, all right. All right. So uh, I think if, uh, Cherith, do you have any questions about 